A serial communications interface is a parallel to serial and serial to parallel I.O. device. On this side we have parallel data transfers which will be loads and stores and on this side we'll be shifting from the PC keyboard to the receiver and shifting from the transmitter to the PC screen. Typically to save power devices are disabled when the microcontroller is first turned on. The clock for this device must be turned on to enable the device even for our asynchronous SCI that we've got here. The next major step is to set up our baud rate and to do 9600 on this particular device we have to put in the hex value 4352. The baud or shift rate for putty over here must also be set to 9600 baud as well. Otherwise this microcontroller will not be able to communicate with this PC that's running putty. The line connecting the PC keyboard to the receiver and the transmitter to the PC screen are at idle high when no data is being sent between these devices. Hitting a key on the keyboard here is an asynchronous or random event. For instance if we hit the capital letter A it's first going to generate here on our line from the idle high condition it's going to go down to ground and hold that for one bit time and that's called the start bit and it generates an interrupt condition on the receiver. After this the least significant bit to the most significant bit of our data for the capital letter A which is 41 hex will appear here followed by a high bit that's going to be held for one bit time again called the stop bit. The stop bit gives the receiver time to deal with what came in from our PC keyboard before another e-press will come in. So once all of that gets shifted into the receiver we have the value 41 sitting here. At this point the receiver data register full flag which was zero to begin with because it had not received any data will now change to one because it has received data from our PC keyboard. Now, we have a function like getchar. Getchar will check our RDRF flag here to see if there is any data in our receiver register here. If there is, it's going to load it from the receiver into a CP register over here and an equivalent variable. As it's loading it into here, this read-write line here will be high, indicating that we're loading data from this register into our CP register here. When that transfer is complete, the RDRF flag here will go back to zero, indicating that this receiver contains no new data. However, it will still contain the 41 until we hit another key over here to overcopy that. A function like putchar will take what we have in our CPU register here and store it to our transmitter. This TDRE flag that was one saying the transmitter data register was empty will now change from a one to a zero as it starts shifting stuff out. And again the first thing that's going to shift out is an idle low for one bit time which is a start bit which will wake up our PC screen followed by the least significant bit to the most significant bit of 41 followed by a stop bit here which is a high bit which will give the PC screen time to display the capital letter A up here. Once it's completely shifted out the stop bit and we have our capital letter A here our TDRE or transmitter data register empty flag will go back to one indicating it's now empty and able to take other values from our CPU register here.